McGenocide. CNN says an IDF soldier has suffered trauma because he had to run over too many Palestinians with his D-9 armored bulldozer. Says he can't eat meat anymore because he had to drive over so much human meat. He actually called it meat. And it reminds him of all the blood and guts and bones and tissue that would come squirting out when he ran over them. Poor IDF soldier. Can't even enjoy a Big Mac anymore. Can't even bite into a big juicy McGenocide burger. Can't even masticate a mouthful of gore without being haunted by visions of human torsos and skulls spurting guts and brains as he plowed over them dead and alive in the killing fields of Gaza. Can't even enjoy his children McNuggets without remembering all the kids he killed. All the tiny bodies, shredded bodies, bulldozed bodies, body parts packed into the treads of the bulldozer, getting caught in the works, having to pull them out by hand because, by golly, we need to use it some more tomorrow. And the CNN man says, so sad, so sad. A man's got to have his meat, got to bite into it, feel it dribbling down his chin, hear it screaming and begging for help hearing it cry out for its mother one last time, and then nothing but snapping and crunching and chewing and swallowing, and washing it down with hard liquor to kill off the feelings in his chest, the feelings that won't ever go away, that pound like mortar fire when he awakens from red dreams about screaming and spurting and crunching and popping, and remembers that he used to be an innocent young child, like the tiny red ghosts, who haunt his nights. And we live the McGenocide too, don't we? We live it right alongside him here in this crazy country, where we laugh and joke and eat buckets of meat slop, while our government turns humans into bulldozer mints in Gaza. Grinning black hole sun grins with meat dribbling down our chins, while the sky turns red and the birds turn into reaper drones giggling at our podcasts and getting mad at the Uber Eats driver for being five minutes late with our next plateful of carnage. And we have the nightmares too, don't we? Waking, trembling with terror at what we've allowed, at what we've helped make possible, what we tacitly consent to while we distract ourselves with smartphones and streaming services and porn and gossip, and the ridiculous fake election for America's next fake president, and plate after plate of bleeding red meat. Our teeth grow sharper, and our hearts grow harder, and the smokestacks fill the air with a horrifying stench. In this genocide town, this ghost town, this meat town, it's essential to learn how to drown out the feelings and bark and bray at the blood-red moon until dawn because it beats the hell out of sleeping and dreaming and remembering, remembering what we have done and where we are going and what we have become and what we are still becoming. <laughs>